Ah, welcome back to Shenanigans, everyone. We've got Janet Elizabeth back on the co-host mic. Woo! Yay, this is becoming like a regular thing again. I'm getting used I know. to it. I love it. Now I feel like you're my security blanket. I'm like, how do I do interviews without you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like still fangirling over you a little bit right now. I'm still exhausted <laughs> over me right now. Last night, I, my voice is like gone. I was supposed to go to the studio with the 27s after this to record a new track we're working on. I'm Amazing. like, it's going to be a writing session yeah. today because my voice is gone. If you missed it, Sheena had a sold out podcast live show at the Bourbon Room and it was so much fun. Your oh, performances, so fun. like Jenny Ting and I were sitting together and we were like bumping the bumps, yeah. screaming at the top of our lungs, <laughs> like Full on fangirl. Like, we were like, oh my gosh, we know her. Like, it was so fun. I was oh, so proud of you. It was thank so, you. so much fun. Yeah, it was a dream come true. There were my, see, my OCD anxiety brain focuses on the flub I had, the thing I didn't say, or like, oh, there I'm were like, just there like were no flubs. little <laughs> moments like that where I was like, oh, I should have said this. And then I was trying to low-key changed the lyrics a little bit of apples mm. but it was just so loud that you couldn't even really hear it so then when you're watching it it looks like i'm not singing the right oh. words couldn't tell from where i was standing and we yeah. were like front front row on the side stage, okay good losing our minds it okay, was good. so so fun yeah so i wanted to shout out the maui fundraiser and then mm -hmm. i was like oh my god i didn't do that when lexi was on stage oh. so i was just like don't hyper focus no on those little details it was such a good show those are things you you might have noticed but as an audience right. member it was like perfect and okay we had so much fun the audience was having so much fun it was awesome okay good yeah i had amazing. the best time so adam newell he he is did from, great he was amazing so uh, he has his youtube show podcast and all that up and at him and he was like hear me out mm -hmm. what if we open with the band and good as gold and you just start the show i loved that with a bang and then as he was walking me through it, he's like, I've done these shows before. I only did one at mm -hmm. City Winery in New York. It was a very small venue, super intimate. Yeah. Tom and Raquel and Nima were my guests. It oh, was no. a very different time and very a different show. But it was great. I mean, it was probably half the amount of people, but it was just a different setup. There was no performance aspect. I did yeah. the splits. That was like the I performance. No, I think kicking off with the Screamo Good as Gold version was yeah. so much fun. Your outfit was fire. Thanks. It was just like, I mean, seriously, we were fangirling out. And the whole, I think that like livened up the whole room. I think Adam yeah. was right. It was, by the way, Adam, Jason, I didn't hear this. Jason was sitting a couple of people down. He was like, man, that man is good looking. And I'm like, <laughs> and everybody afterwards was like, I think Jason has a crush on the, the <laughs> host of the show. I was like, that's fine. He is very good looking. No, he's so adorable. And I loved that he told the story of how we met at the live you're show like, you're because too good you're looking you need to be working it sir <laughs> i'm like he was like 19 maybe 20 years old he was not legal to drink when i met him and i'm like you're working at malibu fish girl which bomb food yeah i would eat there all the time but i was like let's i see more for you let's exploit those looks for some tips yes, over at sir and totally no he's really cute and he used to work at pump too right yeah and then okay. he worked at tom tom okay. so he just kind of hopped around all of the restaurants all the vanderpump places yeah, yeah. I, was like, I, I feel like i've met him back in the day at pump at some point but... yeah and then that's where he met his husband okay yeah so you know thanks to sheena pulling him out of malibu I fish love girl it. here we are to the first, <laughs> hey you introduced me to my second husband yes i loved his f first husband joke too he was it was yeah good. it was really good no he was making some jokes we'll keep off the podcast for now yeah um, last night too yeah <laughs> um, wait okay i have to ask one thing yes at the show if you were there it might be like on floating around somewhere yeah someone from the back they did a q a session someone right. from the back something 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 rim job something something and i'm looking and i'm like did she talk about rim jobs I recently so that i missed confused. <laughs> i'm like is there a question she goes, we had Summer on stage with us and she was like, oh, maybe, you know, have her do earmuffs yeah. or something. So Summer's covering her ears and I'm like, I think I missed the beginning part of this It question. was something like, let's talk about this rim job, something. It was all sex stuff. And I was like, 
what is the question? And Brock kind of no said, idea. like, we'll just drink to that above, yes to or above all or what I don't know. Brock literally also, he's like <laughs> a Jax where he just says the complete wrong thing. So in the car after, it was me and Madison in the back, Heather McDonald in front and our friend Carla. And we're driving to Melrose Place for our after party. And Brock, I was like, why would you kill Allie in yes. a game of Mary fuck kill? Why? Who would kill he Allie? Like, he said like Ariana, he would marry. And then yeah. I forget who he said he would fuck if he even Lala. got that far. Okay. And then, yeah, he was like, I'm going to kill. And everyone's like, we know the answer. Like, right. you can pick from any castmate. I think he thought maybe it had to be from the girls. So that's what he says. So we're driving to Melrose Place. And he goes, look, I'm an asexual male. <laughs> who, and I was like, what did you just say? And he goes, I'm am I bisexual? And I was like, oh my gosh. Brock. I go, oh my God, you are not saying, he goes, what? And I go, you're a heterosexual. Oh. And he's like, yeah, that one, that one, that's what I meant. Oh like, don't God. be going around being like, I'm an asexual male. <laughs> like, like, where is she getting it in then? <laughs> so he's like, no, I'm a heterosexual male. I'm like, I understand that. The game was, any, any cast, cast member. Mate. You were the you obvious kill. There was a very obvious kill in this literally group. Literally <laughs> two very obvious yeah. kills. They don't have to be current cast members. It wasn't like only pick from the four women yeah. on the show right now. But I'm like, why are you going to kill Allie? And he's like, well, Poor if I kill Katie, Allie. she's going to come back and haunt me. She'll actually kill him. <laughs> yeah. I saw Allie for a second afterwards and she was laughing about it. She goes, when he was thinking like, who do I kill? Who do I kill? Allie said that she was nudging James and she was like, he's going to kill you. It's yeah. going to be you. It's going to be you. And then she was like, and then he said, Allie, she was like, me? <laughs> she was like, kill James. I was right? preparing him to get killed. And all of a sudden, but she was laughing about it too. It was yeah, funny. But we but were like, poor sweet Allie. You I know. can't kill her. No. Oh, Heather so McDonald funny. killed it too. She's so funny. So good. Her jokes about talking from the form of a baby uh, on Instagram when for, from baby grams <laughs> was, I mean, we were cracking up. Yeah. Like it, she, she was amazing. So No, she like, was the perfect guest because what I did do at City Winery that was different than this show, I had a stand-up comedian open up the show just uh, so there was like yeah, that sort of performance up. aspect and a warm-up to introduce yeah. me and whatnot. And I thought about doing that too and just like having Heather McDonald open up. Yeah. But then Adam hosting it just kind of made sense outside was, of me. Yeah. And he was perfect for host. I feel like she was the perfect guest. That's like, what I right thought. In the middle. Yeah. He was like, you should see if Heather can be the guest. And I was yeah. like, that is a great idea because then she can still do her comedic bits yeah. and say what she wants to say. And then totally. I had the idea. I was like, well, what if we do this game where it's like you start with the Karen, you yeah. know, everyone has something to say about a Karen. <laughs> and then it just naturally goes into how, unfortunately, Rachel seems to be the new Karen. Oh. And <laughs> OK, I know you've talked about it. I know you talked about it last night a little yes. bit with Heather, but I haven't actually had time to sit down and ask you. Can I ask you some questions about this Bethany interview? Because I'm dying to know some stuff. And I watched your podcast with Ariana, yes. which was amazing. And I thought you guys cleared up a lot. And like, it was great to get Ariana's feelings and yeah. opinions out there because of course she has them. Yeah. Um, I know that she didn't, both of us didn't actually listen to the interview. We read a transcript of the recap totally. because we didn't want to give her actually yeah, yeah, a yeah, listen. No. But I have like some questions about that that I feel like are still kind of floating around unanswered that I wanted to ask you today. Yeah, and, and no, that's fine because I felt like last week I really just wanted to do my best at not making my show about me, yeah. you know? Because the fans, the <laughs> listeners, the haters, whoever, they really have an issue with me ever bringing anything back to myself. Well, don't tune in to the Sheena show if you don't want it to be the <laughs> Sheena show. That's all I have to say. But last week, I wanted to just do my best and let Ariana get yeah. her side out. I mean, she was calm. She was articulate. Totally. I felt like she was empathetic and insightful and just yeah. all of the things it was such a great interview but I wanted her to be able to answer to what was just said about yeah. her because there were some really hurtful things that Raquel and Bethany said totally. and Ariana doesn't have a podcast right now you know she might come back and do one again one day and yeah. I know right after the scandal she did call her daddy like 
obviously, I think yeah. there's Joe Rogan and Call Her Daddy, two of the biggest podcasts out there. Right. So if you have an opportunity to do that, of course. Yeah. But that was also when it was really raw and fresh. And totally. This is more of a safe place with a friend where she could actually just like yeah. kiki and like have it be a real moment to totally. like talk about it. And that's what I thought. And so I was like, I don't want to make any of this about me. When she made the restraining order comment, I was like, okay, we're going to go in on this a little yeah. bit. But my goal was just to let her speak and just hear what she had to say yeah. because until you watch season 11 you know you're not going to really get right. a lot of what her she voice. has to say because yeah. we're not doing podcasts right now unless we have our own right we're not doing interviews you know tmz catches us on the street we're not giving them much more than maybe a short yeah. sound bite so I was glad that she was able to come on and just have a safe space to yeah. discuss everything. And then I'm seeing all of the comments. It's like, oh, we're still on this. You have nothing else to talk about no. other than Rachel and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, first of all, there was new information totally. that just came out. She just did a three part tell all whatever you want to call it with, with 14 Bethany. advertisements in it. Can I just point out between oh, wow. all of that? So. So well, I had three I ad breaks on mine and maybe six ads, so yeah, half, but, but also I even... Are when, you uh, exploiting your guests? No, and the thing is, I even told Ariana, <laughs> I said, because when Brock and I were asking her if she would be comfortable, you know, giving her side yeah. on mine, I'm like, we're all going to have to talk about it eventually. If you have something you want to address you know you're welcome to come on mine and she was like yeah and then brock goes yeah. and don't worry we won't do what bethany did you know we won't take any ad breaks we won't make any i was like no yes, honey i actually contractually but that's different <laughs> bethany and raquel were not friends before this no. you and ariana have been friends for years what i really liked about the podcast that you guys did is it felt like ariana was very much her true self she's a very level-headed calm like kind person and i feel like the last kind of thing maybe that people stick with or like have think of her as is like the reunion yeah and that's not an ariana i know at all no like, that's somebody i saw for the first time and you know i've been friends with her for six years now yeah i've never seen her that sad angry upset so this was kind of a time to like address some of the things in like, yeah in the true form of who she is totally which is a, you know a very calm kind human yeah being. and also when we take the ad breaks it's kind of a time to just you know recollect your thoughts be right. like okay we're gonna go into this next are you yeah. okay with that but <laughs> speaking of we are gonna take one of those ad breaks and then Love we'll be it. right back vroom vroom yes vroom is the better way to buy and sell used cars so if you're looking for your next ride Go to Vroom.com now to shop thousands of cars right from your phone. Y'all, with Vroom, you never have to haggle or negotiate the price of a car, so you know you're getting a good deal. Best of all, when you buy a car on Vroom, they'll deliver it straight to you. You have a full week or 250 miles, whichever comes first, to make sure your new ride is right for you. Plus, all cars on Vroom.com come with a 90-day limited warranty and one year of nationwide roadside assistance, giving you peace of mind while you're on the road. So not only can you buy a car on Vroom.com, but also you can sell or trade in your old car too. No more driving around, getting appraisals, you aren't sure of fair value, all of that. No more posting online or dealing with buyers and their endless questions and haggling over the price. Like, no, not with Vroom. When you sell your car to Vroom, you get an instant offer in as little as two minutes. So all you need to get started is your license plate number or VIN. Then just answer a few questions about your car and Vroom gets you a price instantly. If you decide to sell your car to Vroom, they'll come pick it up free of charge. So sell your car to Vroom or trade it in and find something you like on Vroom.com. It's a better way to buy and sell used cars. So head over to Vroom.com now to see what your current ride is worth and check out thousands of cars to find your next one. That's Vroom.com. Vroom.com. And this episode of Shenanigans is also brought to you by Poise Ultra Thins. So... As you all know, because I've talked to you about this on Shenanigans multiple times, not only am I in love with being a mom, but when it comes to all things motherhood, I think it is so important to be transparent and to talk about the things that not everyone talks about. But here on Shenanigans, that's exactly what I like to do. I like to be open and honest about 
all of the things that might be embarrassing to talk about normally, but I'm like, look, women, after we have a baby, things just hit a little different down there. And the more I have been performing with my band, the more I have been jumping up and down on stage, the more I've noticed, yeah, I get a little bit of bladder leakage. And that is why I have to make sure I always am wearing my boys' ultra thins when I am performing. A lot of women use period pads for their bladder leaks after having a baby, but let's be honest, period pads are not designed for pee. Poise Ultra Thins, on the other hand, are. So Poise Ultra Thins are the brand's thinnest protection that help keep you clean, dry, and fresh throughout the day, whether you're chasing your kid, jumping up and down on stage, or just, you know, living your best life. The little moments really are so important and Poise Ultra Thins are such a good way to enjoy motherhood without compromise. It takes poise. Learn more at poise.com. But yeah, I do feel like I'm kind of still on a high from last Last night. Last night was so funny. Okay, also Summer Moon for her first appearance with her cast off. And she had the cutest little dress on. She had her hair curled. She was like so adorable. She and Ocean running around. First of all, they're like BFF goals. It's so cute. Their friendship is like... I want that. Yeah. Like they're just so, so cute with each other. And when Summer was on stage with you at one point, I don't know if anybody else could hear it other than like kind of your friends and family section. Yeah. But Ocean was reaching for her going, Summer Moon, Summer Moon, <laughs> when she was on Why stage. Why are you on stage without she me? She was like, that's my girl. We're supposed to be doing this together. Right. And then I think Lala let her like run up for a minute and yeah. she, was, she got her moment. And she, both of them did not want to get off stage. No. They were loving it. No, did you see Summer, Summer had a little meltdown. When was I was like, singing what? Apples, she wanted to be up there I with with me and it was just so loud yeah. and I, I wasn't even thinking that with the live performance I should have brought her headphones mm. because she wasn't going to be like right there on yeah. stage when it was only two songs right. you know the rest of the show wasn't so loud she was ready headphones are not to be but, front and center stage and Ocean too when she was up I saw Lala on the side of the stage and she was like come here come here come here like it's time to and she was like looking around and I think at one point she said like no like to Lala yeah. she was like no and I was like oh my god this is so cute no but it was so adorable. fun but we have photos after of Summer just crying and I'm like oh. Oh. she just like and I saw as I'm like jumping I'm like hey P-P-L-E-S and I see Brock walking with her and she's just like oh. and I was like oh I feel so I'm like it's only a two minute song kid we got this you know rather <laughs> a meltdown to like get back on stage than like getting up there and being like scared of the crowd right like, I feel like you never know how a kid's gonna react in that well, but yeah. she loved it like I know. both of them did it was adorable yeah, I was like oh you could do like little stars waving to yeah. everyone she was like throwing I think somebody gave her a little bracelet yeah which so, um, a really sweet lady gave me this boy mom bracelet oh yes she told me she had something Charisse, for you I think yes okay yes she was so sweet but, yeah um, I think they gave Summer a bracelet and she was like tossing it back and forth with them on stage I was like oh my god she's a natural born star no it was so <laughs> cute what do you think it. is in future for your little boy I don't know. We'll see. I guess if I, <laughs> we'll see. How have you been feeling? <laughs> feeling good. Feeling good lately. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday was so hot out, so it was just like, I was sweating up a storm, but good. Yeah. I mean, overall, I feel like second trimester, everybody says, is like easy. The best. I just the other day taped or uh, saran wrapped um, a watermelon and two cantaloupes to Jason and made him <laughs> do stuff around the house with me to see like, I was like, we'll see. Because he was like, oh, it's not, he, he doesn't think it's a, at that bad, I think. Mm-hmm. And at first he was like doing stuff. He's like, oh, I can squat. And then when he tried to bend over and he realized you can't yeah. do that, he was like, oh, well, that part's hard. And I was like, that's, yeah. Right. Like, that's the part. Yeah. Like, you get to the point. In the third trimester when you're like at the eight, nine month mark and you're yeah. like, I can't tie my own shoes. Yeah. I was just like, and I'm starting to get there. And then now like when I get out of bed, I'm like, can you give me a lift? And Jason will put his arm up yeah. and I'll hold on to it instead of trying to lift with my belly. But yeah, it's yeah. All, all around good pregnancy stuff good. so far. Well, you look great. Your Thanks. pictures with Jenny Ting, you guys oh my God. holding hands and doing all that was so cute. We're bump twins. I love her. I love it. <laughs> it's no. so much fun. To, we're one month apart. I on know. Our you guys are both having boys. And I that's know. how like Lala and I, we were three weeks apart but then she delivered three weeks early yeah. so the kids are going to be the same we send each other summer and ocean content and we're like this is going to be our boys right we're like this is so cute and i love that you're both having boys <laughs> i know it's going to be super fun i love her she's yeah. just great no so good oh such a and we know jenny Ting through raquel which i have i'm sorry so many okay. burning questions about okay. i have to get off my chest okay 
<laughs> All right. Okay. Go. First one, <laughs> timing wise, with like the Bethany interview. Yeah. Why now? Do you think that Raquel like just got out of her treatment and she wanted to do something as soon as she got out? My first like thought was, well, Bethany's you know really rich. Like you yeah, know, she has millions and millions of dollars. Maybe I was like if, at first before they kind of cleared this up, I was like she must be getting paid like a hundred grand or something to do this podcast interview. Right. They said later in the comments, I think Bethany said she was not paid and then kind of said like, we'll see if she gets paid. But I'm like, why now? Like, what do you think timing wise of like, how, why? Like, That's what's so weird it? because it's like, you're not coming back to the show. You are wanting to change your name. You're not wanting to be in the spotlight. You don't want to come back to LA. You don't yeah. want to be a part of this friend group. You're you don't want to speak to Tom Sandoval health, anymore. Supposedly. Supposedly, right? But what's also interesting, I noticed, and this could be a total weird coincidence, but the day the interview came out, like two weeks ago on mm -hmm. Wednesday, Emmy voting was the next day on Thursday. Interesting. And I'm like, did I, I don't know that they were trying to hurt something with Vanderpump Rules, but that was just a weird I coincidence as well. Hmm. So then when, you know, part three came out i was like oh apples is dropping today we can't get I it on spotify in a day we can't get it on apple music in a day but we can get the lyrics video up in a day i love it so i was i loved the timing for I had you to. were gonna release it like in a week or two after that right yeah i was gonna last night was gonna be the debut so i had the lyrics video made so i could send it to the venue and we could make sure we could sync up the yeah. audio with the video because when you're especially performing a song live, you can't hear every word. Even when I sent it to my mom, she didn't realize I was spelling apples. She thought I was saying, hey, keep the alias. How you like that or something. And I was <laughs> oh, like, oh, that's funny. No, that actually does work too. But I was like, no, it's A-P-P-L-E-S. I'm glad that you actually did that because the everybody was singing along with you yeah. and knew the lyrics then yeah. already. So it was kind of fun for like audience to participate in singing it instead yeah. of hearing it for the first time and then going home and right. Thing, so. I just wanted them to be able to download it when they got home. And so it was like the original plan was to have it released around then. And then yeah. we had the artwork made, which was not ready yet to release. So the song, hopefully the day this podcast drops, the song should be out. Yeah. That is the goal. Are you doing Apple's merch? That's what I want to do too. I just made, well, my me sister too. made me the hoodie last night with the 27 and I the apple on that. it. They're like, this can't be a one-time thing. I was like, you guys, I got everything on Amazon. I just made it myself. You got to release it. I, I would, think we... I want some Apple's merch. We need to do some Apple's yeah. merch. So working on that. Okay. Yeah. Another uh, Bethany Raquel okay. Rachel. I don't know what to call her. I so weird. The thing is, whatever comes out of my mouth, if I'm I looking changed. at... A note that I have or something, you know, when I write down Rachel, if I want to address it, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when I'm just telling a story, it's easier for me to just say Raquel because I've That's known you, her as Raquel yeah, for years. so long, yeah. you know? Okay, my question then, okay, timing wise, kind of got that, but like, yeah. why Bethany? Because as far as I know, they didn't know each other from the Bravo universe before any of this. Yeah. As, as far as I know, they've never met. No. So why Bethany? Like, you know, she, we, I mean, behind the scenes, maybe it's something that viewers don't understand, but you mm -hmm. can get paid for these interviews. She could have gone on right. and probably gotten Well, a and I big, did hear she had offers. Yeah. So she could have gone on to probably some pretty big networks, mm -hmm. podcasts, things like that, and gotten yeah. a pretty paycheck, which, you know, she's claiming she's in debt and made no money and all this kind of stuff. So why Bethany? My first thing was Bethany's rich. She paid her. But when they kind of disputed that, I was like, well, then why? Because I'm also curious where her $361,000 went. Obviously, taxes, part of it, but she kept the tags on her reunion outfit <laughs> to return. So I'm like, you're not bl blowing money on wardrobe. Yeah. I don't know about that too, but I did see there was like a TikTok or something. I think that Bethany did where she made like a sympathetic comment about Raquel's situation. Oh. And I know I saw somewhere that Raquel's mom, I guess, was like a oh. big fan of Bethany. So interesting. What I heard was that they reached out to Bethany. Hmm. And I feel like maybe they thought, oh, well, Bethany's already, you know, sympathetic towards our situation yeah. and what she's going through. Even when Bethany had never seen the show. She yeah, knows nothing know. about that's, Vanderpump Rules. I'm like, Howie Mandel. A bit at the also, end. I'm like, come on, literally, get somebody Howie Mandel 2.0. Because that's what the, the viewers who invest yeah. their time and years and years of watching, they want to see somebody who knows 
what they're asking. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really strange. And yeah, the whole, I guess, I don't know, the whole part with Bethany, I'm like, you know, here's the irony is like, here's Raquel talking about everybody's made money off Scandaval except for me. First of all, girl, you could have made a merch account. <laughs> right. You could have sold merch just like everybody else. You yeah. could have put the other woman on a t-shirt and sold Didn't it. did Sabrina Carpenter, someone do that with, it was something like negative that was said about her, but she literally put it on a sweatshirt. My, I mean, might as well. She could have made home wrecking merch. Yeah. People would have bought it. Right. I mean, <laughs> there was people who were out there. But I'm like, here she is, the irony doing a podcast for free when, uh -huh. and while she's on that podcast complaining that she didn't make any right. money i'm like girl do you not realize that this podcast is the opportunity this interview yeah. is the opportunity you could have made money on right i feel like maybe her pr team no oh. what was that Sorry. Sorry, I was to watch oh <laughs> i was like wait did i hear something <laughs> I feel like maybe her PR team felt like they could control the narrative more if they went with someone who was already sympathetic yeah. towards her, you know, situation, whatever you want to call it. If she went with like ABC News or TMZ yeah. or something that they wouldn't have any control and with someone like Bethany, they could maybe control the narrative a but bit. worth losing the paycheck that she's complaining about over right i'm like it just i don't know it feels like i don't know i, I felt the same way when tom did howie's interview mm -hmm. i'm like oh how convenient to pick someone that's never seen the show before right because they can't ask the follow-up questions like he said who is sheena right <laughs> and i'm like oh my gosh like when he said that i'm like I'm like, why are we watching this? And yeah. it's almost insulting as viewers because I'm like, yeah. when you listen to these podcasts, you're you're screaming all these follow up questions at them, and they yeah. don't hit any of them. No, and you're like, what what's going on here? So it's like, I guess it's easier to portray the victim role to somebody who doesn't know the history. Yeah, and I think with Bethany's whole reality reckoning movement that she's trying to start is it a movement is it like an idea i don't know nail in the coffin for that but i feel like some of raquel's narratives that she told you know fit within this movement mm -hmm. she's trying to do but let's remind ourselves this affair did not happen on the show. Yes. This was not a part of season 10. It was a secret from season 10. It was something that they literally Kept. tried to cover yeah. up with Schwartz. Yep. Like, this was not a storyline. So if you want to say this was a whole thing to try and save the show... Who was going to tell production that this was the plan? Because right. nobody knew. If we're talking about saving the show. Ariana saved the show by when, as soon as she found out, which Tom and Raquel wanted to keep it. They yes. wanted to deal with this behind closed yes. doors. Ariana called production. She's yeah. the one who brought it on the show. Yeah. But I did. I thought that same thing when she, if she, she's almost insinuated that production kind of, look, producers ask you guys to meet with people or do things yeah you know that you always have the right i think to say no to but they're yeah. like hey you know we're gonna set up a dinner with the girls and you know everybody mm -hmm. but if you're not speaking to somebody you can say no i'm not going to that right. if they're going she makes it sound like pr this was a production production setup and i'm like first of all if production asked you to sleep with tom for seven <laughs> months behind closed doors what you just said yes and then okay. you said blamed it on well, them they're later they're paying me 19,000 an episode right. so i guess i'll do what they want me to do like what so i'm like this isn't and it all happened behind closed doors off the show they had to then bring cameras up out of because of ariana yeah because she alerted production hey right. this so for sandoval to say you know ariana was never honest about the truth of their relationship look if i'm being honest there are definitely things with shay and i back in the day rob and i yeah. that i wanted to keep you know private i wanted to right. keep a little bit of privacy but that's not what we signed up for so if ariana was doing that out of what i think respect for sandoval because yeah just like when she covered for him with miami girl mm -hmm. she didn't want people to think the worst of him right so if she was hiding anything i think it was out of protecting him and out of respect for him totally and you guys only get i mean i think people think maybe that it's like ed tv or whatever that old reality yes. TV movie was back in the day where cameras are around you guys 24 yeah. 7 unfortunately because Production involves sound people, camera people, all of these people that they are in unions and not allowed to work like more than 12 hours or I don't know what it is, but they're not following you guys around 24 seven. Right. So, you know, if you do have a fight with your significant other off camera, it's like, well, yeah, that might be how I don't know how many hours are in a week. But like if you're filming 
40 let's say yeah then like yeah a lot of stuff happens off camera and it's not like you're gonna be like hey we got into a fight last night we resolved it but let's talk about it again on camera like there's a lot of stuff that will happen off and like i don't think that's that strange to like not bring up every fight or little thing totally and And if they felt like their relationship was on the rocks you know that's something that's not necessarily going to make it better right Like, for example, I feel like Brock and I are in a really good place in our relationship, but we go at it. Yeah. And this is the first relationship that I've been okay with having some fights on camera. Right. Showing those aspects of our life because that's real, you know? And yes, how we work through it. But I'm like, everything's not perfect. Yeah. No one has a perfect relationship. We disagree on parenting. We disagree on who watches our kid because, you know, my mom has her opinions and then Brock wants this person. But then it was just like, there's so many things. But I'm like, that's a part of our story. We talk about it on this podcast. I talk about it on the show because that's the reality. Well, it's real and it's relatable. Yeah. I think most people probably, especially when they have kids or have something going on in a marriage, it's, you know, that that's relatable. Yeah. Something also tie into Brock with all of this. There was a comment made by Raquel on the Bethany podcast about how Brock was going to make an offer on the house next door to you in Palm Springs and that Lala stole it from him. And I was like, I had never heard about this. Right. So when I heard that, I was thinking, I'm like, wait, Lala, when did you close escrow? And then I remember it was actually the day we shot the reunion because then we drove out to Palm Springs the next morning. Right. That was her first day in her house. So I was like, okay, Raquel and I were still friends when you made the offer. I was trying to think if there was... A way that I said something that made Raquel think that. Yeah. I was like, where did this come from? And I'm like, the only thing I could have said to her was maybe when we were in New York or whatever, I was saying how Brock went over next door to talk to the neighbors about my friend putting an offer on the house. Yeah. We wanted, because there were other offers from other neighbors who wanted to get it for a rental property. Right. And I had Brock go over and we're like, no, no, no. Like, we need this house. For Lala. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. So I don't know if there was some confusion with that, you were like, but I'm let's like, let's do it like a more like a pocket listing kind of thing and sell yes. it to my friend who's not going to be renting it out. It's right. Be and like I'm like, her this residence. is my you know forever home until I get a bigger home yeah. in Palm Springs. And if I'm gonna have new neighbors, I loved our neighbors. They right. were so sweet. I'm like, and can having, you please pick my friend? Yeah. It was never. Brock wanted the house. Well, I was like, "What? Why would Brock want the house next door? You guys have an amazing house in Palm right. Springs. What are you going to build a bridge and have it be like I don't know, a compound?" I was no. like, "What is happening here?" I had never heard of that. Yeah, I, you know, no, that was so weird. Okay, so we, there's no truth to that. No, or like anything like that. No, there were. Oh God, there were a lot of things that she said that there was not truth to. Yeah. Oh, I also want to know. She said that Tom. Okay, this is my other thing. She said Tom was offered a producer credit for season eleven, which I was like, if any of you guys were offered a producer credit, it would give you more control over some of the editing, some of the casting, like right. you know, scenes. Maybe you would get a little bit more say on like you know how the show runs, yeah, how it's produced. So I'm like, there's no way Tom would get offered a producer credit and not take it. No. So if he got offered a producer credit, you would see in the credits of the show, right? Producer Tom Sandoval. Stay tuned, I guess. <laughs> I'm like, so, but like that doesn't, he's not. it's not how it works, you know? Yeah. And also, when Raquel said, you know, that she didn't want to come back to the show for her mental health, but then she also said she would have come back to the show if she her mental health was has a price. making as much as Tom and Ariana. Yeah. So it was like, I was wondering that. She was like, I wouldn't come back for my mental health unless you paid me enough. Then, then I'll destroy then my back. mental health for, you know, whatever it is. And or whatever her episodic rate is, there's a dollar amount on what she is willing to right. risk her mental health for. So, which was kind of, ugh. I mean, she contradicted herself a lot in that. A and lot. That was like kind of yeah I don't know she also said something about like well everybody on the show has cheated or done something like this and I've just gotten like the worst of it or the worst response to it but I'm like for me as a viewer I've seen every episode Mm -hmm. of Vanderpump you know a lot of the cheating stuff happened early on in the show when everybody's living in apartments dating they don't own homes together yeah it's not marriages like i thought of tom and ariana as a married couple like it definitely is like life partners like a common law spouse or whatever it's called very much so if they didn't want the if ariana didn't want the paperwork like i didn't see them as any different than like jason and i No. and um but i think a lot of the cheating for me as a viewer happened Mm -hmm. early on when the stakes were a lot lower it's like yeah we were in our 20s right and it was like cheating on both 
both ends. You know, Kristen slept with, and right. sorry, Kristen, most of Tom's friends. <laughs> right. And uh, Tom yes, slept with, and, and, yeah. and then, yeah, Tom and Ariana had their thing when him and Kristen were still together, but Kristen was already sleeping with James, and it was just, and Jax, but and this, it was so messy. The stakes there were just, you hurt people's feelings, not right. like you have to list your home for sale and Literally. potentially lose... I don't know money or whatever. So I'm I'm kind of confused why she yeah. thinks she got it. Well, I'm like, well, of course you got it harder than anyone else. Mm-hmm. Also, none of those cheating things. Those were all kind of like like you know we know the Kristen and Jack's like drive movie drive situation was yeah. like that time. It's like not like this seven month long love affair where people say they're in love with each other. Yeah, and I'm like, this is why it was so you know so much bigger for yeah. you it's like nobody else was really a mistress where they saw a long-term relationship that they've seen for eight ten years whatever yeah. however long tom and ariana were together on the show be destroyed that was a much bigger deal yeah so many different elements and levels of this affair and betrayal it wasn't just like oops i banged your friend right. once i'm sorry yeah which also by the way those took years to come back from it wasn't like after Stassi backhanded Kristen they were best friends sipping rosé the next day right no it took years totally and everybody refusing to be around each other yes. and all of that I mean Stassi left the show after that for yeah. a while like yeah I think that the others still had their blowback and stuff mm-hmm. this was just more because the stakes were way higher in the situation yeah my question is okay for restraining order and all of that stuff that happened um I had Raquel reach out to me I think I've mentioned this before like a month or two after um, everything happened and she said like thanks for reaching out the day of and mm-hmm. basically you know telling her she should apologize that stuff has she reached out to you at all and if she did and was seemed apologetic would you hear her out hear her out I had been I mean up until this podcast literally and I still I haven't blocked her or anything like that I had been waiting to hear from her Mm -hmm. because I felt like it would have been a much different conversation now after her getting out of this facility and everything. I absolutely would have heard her out. But now that the podcast was the nail in the coffin, you know. She really downplayed your guys' friendship and that, I was watching that and my my jaw, oh, I didn't, I saw clips of it Mm -hmm. when she was talking about you and basically she's like, I'm her cat sitter and I'm like, what when heather brought that up at the show last night how hard is it to watch a cat first of all (laughs) she said because of mercury shots or something i'm like penny lane had a radio iodine procedure done on her thyroid and for three weeks was radioactive and couldn't be around anyone under the age of 18 i have a baby right and also i was breastfeeding at the time so i was worried about that that as well we still had our house in san diego raquel needed a place to stay so I was like, well, you know what? Because my mom and sister were planning on just checking on Penny, making sure she had food and water. But yeah. cats are self-sufficient. Litter box, food, water, occasional cuddles, you know, they're fine. I've watched your cats before. Right. They're, you just kind of get to be at your house you don't where need you to have do good anything. snacks and drinks and they're just kind of there. Right. And also while Penny was radioactive, they said even adults had to have less than an hour time within a few feet of her right. per day. So Raquel really didn't have to do anything. It was also three weeks yeah. out of the six months. Right. I mean, for what you, I mean, I was around, it was not being filmed, but like you gave her a place to stay. I mean, like, it's not like she was paying like, you know, you, how much your apartment cost. No, actually, it was a thousand dollars towards my $4,300 rent. Right. And she took care of electricity, and not parking, not cable. Couldn't stock it with toilet paper. I was going to say, I went over there once and it was like you had just gotten back and there was like no toilet paper, no paper towels, all no that. No water. That stuff. The Brita had like mold in it. And I'm like, girl, yeah. come on. Like, like keep have the you... place running. And then I reminded myself, oh, she's never lived on her own before. So then I just felt like I needed to be the mom in the situation where I had to walk her through when you live alone, when you have a roommate, when it's not your boyfriend taking care of you. Who is These wiping are things you? you do. Like, what, are you, what are you doing without toilet paper in the apartment? The, yeah, there's, I mean, you did a lot for her. You were a very good friend to her. Mm-hmm. To hear her kind of like downplay that on the podcast and basically be like, she you know like she really was like a little sister Mm -hmm. it was everybody i think saw that relationship and that was around you guys that was the truth yeah so to see her kind of downplaying it i was like what is 
and act like she was doing me favors on my podcast as if like my podcast was struggling and I needed her to save the show. She asked me after her breakup with James, someone who struggles with public speaking and right. always is very rehearsed. And I mean, she had, if you watch it, I think that one's on my Patreon. But she had a list of all of her handwritten notes that she was like, I need to say this and then I need to say this in this way and I want to say this. And I was like, don't worry, it's not live. It can yeah. be edited. But she came to me and said, I want to share my I'm story. Ready. I'm only comfortable doing that with you. Can we do a podcast together? And I was like, fuck yeah. I've yeah. been asking you to do one with me for so long. Well, we only did one together during the pandemic with me, Brock, her and James in Palm Springs. Yeah. This one was so different because she had so much she wanted to say. So should I say that you used me as right. an outlet? You know, I'm not saying that. We were friends. Well, it's interesting that she's saying this while on Bethany's podcast. It's like, right. I do you not see this side by side double standard? Like you she know, doesn't know what that is. I don't. Yeah, we're gonna take another break. We'll <laughs> be right back. <laughs> All right, now let me tell y'all about what I have been putting on my face first thing before I put my makeup or moisturizer or anything, and that is my Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. I had never used a primer before unless I got my makeup professionally done until I got this Milk Makeup one because I heard it was the best, and I'm telling you, I will never use another primer. When I was on set for over 12 hours for my Good as Gold music video, my makeup did not budge. At my live show last week with all of the lights jumping up and down, performing so hot, my makeup did not budge. And I can only chalk that up to, it's the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. This primer leaves your skin with a dewy, glowy finish. I'm telling you, your makeup is not gonna budge. You could run a marathon and your glam is still going to be on point. On top of that, it is 94% natural. It's vegan, clean, cruelty-free, paraben-free, silicone-free, oil-free, fragrance-free, and wait for it, mm -hmm. yes, it's also gluten-free, and they have 4,700 five-star reviews. 4,700. So if that doesn't say something, I don't know what does. I, if I were you, would head over to your local Sephora or get yours at milkmakeup.com. And now step into a world of nonstop action on DraftKings Casino. Play the classics like blackjack, roulette, and slots. Plus, enjoy exclusive games you can't find anywhere else. Right now, new customers can get a deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. You might have seen me post about this on my Instagram. My reel is still there. If you didn't see it and you want to go watch it, it's really easy. All you have to do is sign up, select the offer, make your deposit, and start playing from a full suite of games. Your way is the only way to play on DraftKings Casino. You can play online, on your own time, in your own space, within your means. It's safe, secure, and reliable, so you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you're ready. Download the DraftKings Casino app now, sign up with promo code HONEY, and new customers get a deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. Only on DraftKings Casino with promo code HONEY. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Please play responsibly. In partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races in West Virginia, all games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. 21 and over, physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. One per opted in new customer. Minimum $5 deposit. Minimum $100 match in casino credits which require one times play through within seven days. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash players choice. Restrictions apply. I was expecting, you know, her to come into this when I saw like the transcript of the interview and bites and stuff mm -hmm. online, I thought it was I was hoping to see a lot of accountability here. And instead, what I feel like she said is like, 
oh, I like I was assaulted, but I was still the villain. And she blamed, there was mm-hmm. a lot of blame game. Oh, Ariana and I weren't that close. Sheena wasn't really like a big sister. There was a lot of like things that I'm like, oh, she's not taking accountability really at all here. She's shifting blame to a lot of different people. Yeah. So I don't even know how to make a question out of that. But like, how did that make you feel? And, you know. I feel like she was just trying to make this, you know, public spectacle about her allegations against me filing the TRO and all of that because I think she thought it would like maybe reframe the narrative and people would see, oh my gosh, she's the victim. Not Ariana. You know, Raquel was the victim. When I know for a fact, Raquel called people that night after I pushed her and said, you know, Sheena acted reasonably i deserved it i would never press charges when right. someone had brought up like oh are you doing anything about this she was like oh my god no right. like i totally deserved that now i think she said i saw somewhere that i socked her in the eye <laughs> and again i'm like i i don't do that yes i did i pushed you you grabbed my wrist i pushed you away from me i didn't want you touching me i pushed you away well i remember when you described it to me i think the next morning or soon afterwards to me it sounded like what i call a bratty girl push where you're like just like you know you're like like, how could you do this it's like how you fight with a sister where you're like get away from me and you just like kind of you know and i was so fired up because i just found out that she had been lying to me for seven months but also zero emotion right if that's I, if that were me i would be sobbing i'm so sorry oh my god yeah. i don't know how I, the it's secrets like, I'm out as, like but it was just like whoops yeah got caught and i i guess like if she's gonna double down now about that night why not show up to court then like why did she because she was in tom sandoval's bed that's why <sighs> paparazzi saw her leaving that next morning okay well it's like you know either show up in court right. if you really believe that this happened yeah. and fight it but like her not showing up and i feel like she backed down after that from what yeah. i heard from mutual friends she was like no i shouldn't have done that i shouldn't have filed right that. and now it's like you're doubling down and being like no but i was the victim and i'm like first of all Raquel, did I try to contact you once after New York? I have never tried to speak no. to you again. So you got a restraining order. For harassment or something right. else. And it's like, this person hasn't tried to contact you one time. You said first it was a cooling off period. And then you're saying, that it was just, she changed her story so yeah. many times. And it didn't make sense. Because then you also told Andy Cohen that you regretted it. And you wanted yeah. to dismiss it. But now you're doubling down and saying you were assaulted. I thought it was respectable when she said, like, I shouldn't have done that because I don't think she should have done that. And I having, you know, seeing you go to court, leaving summer. I mean, yeah. I saw you behind closed doors crying about having yeah. to deal with this stress, leaving, you know, summer, you know, with your mom and where she's safe and everything. Mm-hmm. But like having to spend a whole day getting ready for court, yeah. going to court across town in the rain. Yeah. Like, I don't know. So when she backed down about that, I was like, well, at least she's starting to do the right thing here. Yeah, but... At the end of the day, I think this provided me some closure. You know, I've fully accepted I'm never going to get any sort of apology from her. And I don't need it anymore. At this point, this is just who she is. You know, she is um, not capable of taking accountability. And, uh, you know, her actions and her behavior just further show this is not someone i want in my life it's not the person i think you knew it's not it that's why i was like i'm mourning the loss of my friend raquel while asking myself who the fuck is rachel it's two different people it's a very good way to put it it just but i feel like her doing this and her dismissing our friendship and her acting like it was some like quid pro quo even no it was all of that it has helped me fully move on from anything I was still feeling yeah. about her. I really hoped that she was going to come out of this facility, have a diagnosis, have a treatment plan. Yeah. And, and take accountability yes. and say, I, I realize what I've done and I'm working towards yes. not being like that anymore instead of excuses. And I feel like all she learned yeah. in treatment from what I'm seeing in that interview is 
a new buzzword because she kept saying like vitriol like yeah. over and over again. And I was like, yeah. Do you, I haven't never heard you say that word until now. But no. it definitely wasn't the accountability that I was hoping to see with her. Yeah. No. And, and then then you, you throw Graham, now a hippie oh, yeah. on top she, of it. Yeah, and she kind of tried so, to so many things. back out of that that. Yeah, there was a lot of blaming of everybody else around her. And I felt like Bethany was just trying to steer it into her narrative of how reality TV is toxic. And I'm like, these two things are not, I don't know, it just didn't align for me. Mm -hmm. It was not, I, th I think they thought they ate and left no crumbs. And I'm like, oh, guys, no, <laughs> like this is, this is not it. Yeah. It was kind of a bummer. <sighs> it was, but... At the end of the day, I feel like I have my closure. And, you have closure, that's good. You know, I still, I, I wish her the best. I hope she continues to get the help she still needs mm -hmm. and work on herself and stay in therapy and, yeah. you know, just try to be a better person because she did a really fucked up thing yeah. for a really long time. And I just hope one day she can realize that instead of this doubling down yeah. not taking accountability narrative Blame because game. that just doesn't fly yeah it's always good to work on yourself i hope she does too yeah and we'll see i mean and hopefully one day she, I, th I don't think she can she's forgiven herself yet maybe yet i think she's still kind of getting there yeah so she needs i think to work on herself become a better person so she can forgive herself and then maybe um once she does that and takes some accountability maybe some other people will too mm-hmm <sighs> Until then. Okay, that was my last Until question. Then. Okay. <laughs> for about that. But I have a million others. Okay. Okay. Enough about Rachel, yeah. Raquel, that was my Bethany. Last one. <laughs> I would love for that story to just die on the same hill that Bethany is on with this fucking podcast. I think I got all podcast. my questions out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last break, and then we'll be right back with some more fun questions. Yay. And another thing that is important for me at home. As long as I am fed and I have a comfy bed, I am a happy girl. My listeners know I'm all about comfort and spending time snuggling in bed with my baby girl, Summer, which, yes, I do. I bring her in the bed in the morning. And the reason, well, I love my snuggles, but also we have the most amazing sheets on our bed. I'm telling you that whether I'm working, relaxing, watching Coco freaking Melon. It's gotten so much better with Buffy bedding. So I have the comforter. I have the sheets. I have the pillowcases. I have it all, not just in Marina, also in Palm Springs. I have been sleeping with my Buffy comforter for years now. I just upgraded and got all new sheets and pillowcases. I am telling you, y'all, it is a game changer. Brock literally got in bed a few weeks ago and he was like, wait, is this what new good sheets feels like? And I was like, yes, honey, it is. Buffy has Earth's softest bedding. You can sleep cooler and he is normally a hot sleeper. So Buffy is great for both of us. Y'all can upgrade your bedding with the breeze sheet set by Buffy by going to Buffy.co and use code Sheena for 25% off your first order. That's Buffy.co promo code Sheena for 25% off. It's Friday, and that means it is Factor Friday, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit that can help you fuel up fast with so many delicious chef-prepared and dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. I talk to you guys about this every week because it is what I eat every week, especially this summer. I have been so busy. You know I've been filming I'm constantly on the go, and one thing I just have not had time to do is think about food for myself and Brock. I make sure summer's fed, but outside of that, I don't want to go to the grocery store and figure out dinner for us every night and lunch in between scenes and um, the occasional midnight snack. So with Factor, I always have something delicious, flavorful to fill me up and keep me going. Also, if you need an extra boost to support your wellness goals or, you know, just to feel your best for the rest of summer, you can try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more 
per serving, which has been Brock's go-to lately. Right now, my listeners can head to factormeals.com slash goodasgold50 and use code goodasgold50 to get 50% off. That's code goodasgold50 at factormeals.com slash goodasgold50 to get 50% off. All right, okay. hit me, Janet. All right, I have just some general questions. Um, you, we talked about this uh, a couple weeks, months ago. I don't even know the time. Where are you now with OCD and anxiety? I thought it was very brave of you to share what you're going through. And I know that you mentioned like at the show last night that you know you definitely were very anxious about making sure that it you know was a success, which it was. So where are you now? How are you feeling? And uh, yeah, where are you in that process? I had a lot of people actually come up to me last night and thank me and that just meant the world to me because I had this one girl and she was probably early 20s and she goes until hearing you on your podcast say about intrusive thoughts she goes I had no idea that that's what was wrong with Mm. me and now her mom has taken her to someone and they've diagnosed her and that's amazing she was just like that helped me so much So she's like, please continue to talk about that. And I said, I will. I was like, I know recently we haven't done Mm -hmm. too many updates on that, but I'm glad you asked because that just last night, I was like, I kept trying to, I was like, I've got really good makeup right now. I don't (laughs) want to cry, cry, but that's why I talk about these things on this podcast. And I like to be so open because there's so many silent struggles that people deal with. Totally. And miscarriage was one of the first ones that I opened up on this podcast and I had family members and friends who I had no idea had had multiple miscarriages reach out to me yeah and then when I started talking about my intrusive thoughts like I didn't want to even for almost a year in therapy open up to my therapist about that because I'm like she's gonna think I'm crazy <laughs> but then I'm like no I think anybody, she hears it all you it's know good for anybody to think you're crazy it's a therapist yeah then they can help you work and it, it. <laughs> my therapist is amazing and I felt like that was a safe space and when I'm I don't know what I was at at that point over a year postpartum but she's like I think you've been dealing with postpartum OCD and then we started doing some of those exercises and questionnaires and stuff and Mm -hmm. just realizing that was such a weight lifted off me yeah because I've always made those jokes my whole life when it comes to certain numbers you know I used to only follow 420 Mm -hmm. and I would have to have the tv volume at a certain number and the, the house needs to be tidy and my emails need to be cleared and I can't have any unread texts and all of that. And just finally being able to, you know, like, sorry to people I work with, but I, I, I'm a little slower on the emails. That's I good, don't though. let it bother me. I keep up with my text because that's one that yeah. I, that's just something with me. But you're allowing some balance kind of into your life. Totally. Not rushing to do all the work stuff all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, I think it's really great, like hearing that, you know, someone came up to you and maybe they didn't even know the phrase intrusive thoughts and you having these experiences that you're not really sure what they are. And obviously you have, you know, this platform, but you also have the resources to have a great therapist Mm -hmm. and so there might be times where people are kind of like not open to therapy or can't afford it or not really sure what's going on but hearing you explain what you're going through then puts kind of a title to like oh these things that I keep thinking about or feeling it's intrusive thoughts and just sometimes maybe putting a label on it and hearing like that's what I'm feeling too and then being able to like research themselves or go to therapy and say I'm having intrusive thoughts Mm -hmm. you know really helps people I don't know take the next step or like really get help and I'm I'm glad that you got to I guess have like interactions I know you did like a meet and greet last night and just to have like real connections with your fans because I mean I get dms from people talking about it and how brave you are and I'm proud of you like I've had my own mental health struggles in the past and hearing you be open and honest about it I think is like really really amazing like Thank you have you. a platform you're using it for good and um connecting with people and hearing feedback that it is helping people yeah. i think is really great yeah i've had so many people reach out and i'm like i will continue talking about this yeah. right now i'm not on the zoloft i did feel that was making me slightly zombie like yeah. but i also know i was feeling a little better mentally when i was on that mm-hmm. so i wanted to give it some time to just completely have that out of my system yeah. i do have xanax i take very not often like very just much as needed um very rarely but that's something where if I'm feeling really nervous or tense or anxious yeah it's a low dose it's like 0.25 and I keep those on me because you never know when 
you might need one of those. Right. And so for now, that's all I've been doing. I have not smoked weed in, gosh, almost, I don't know, two and a half, three months now maybe. Wow. And I feel better with that. Good. Microdosing is going to be the next thing I try. And then cool. I'm doing an in-person EMDR intensive okay. down in San Diego with my therapist. That's amazing. And hopefully that will help work so out you're some still of these on kinks. the journey of yeah. figuring it out and you're I mean I think that's I've said this before but like I love that you're a doer when something's wrong you don't just sit there and complain about it you're like I'm trying this so I love that you're yeah. kind of going through the steps and like figuring out what's best for you and what works and what doesn't and yeah. sharing it I think with others is amazing yeah because you know when you do find something you're like wow this really really helped me mm -hmm. and you can share it there might be thousands of other people that follow in your footsteps and that works for them or just hearing like what you've tried and what you know and maybe Zoloft will work for some people yeah and, and I, I didn't honestly know that existed until you know. right and I might end up going back on that because I do know whether it was a placebo or whatever in the five weeks that I took it I was definitely feeling better yeah but before I got too dependent on that I was like I don't like how tired it's making me right. I love having my energy back I feel like I'm more present for my kid when I have the most energy yeah. possible I still drink my caffeine right. but you know we all do <laughs> um so I'm gonna try our friend Kale has a mushroom business and he has teas gummies mints mm -hmm. and so oh, I'm gonna, I remember <laughs> I'm gonna try that next and see what a low dose of that does and um yeah i'll keep you guys posted on my journey i loved hearing about it i think yeah. that's great thanks um i wanted to ask okay if you could bring back one former cast member who is no longer on the show back to vanderpump like main cast i'm talking like Jax, Brittany, Kristen, dana Brittany. i think who okay i yeah. figured that would probably be an easy yeah, answer <laughs> i i miss Brittany. And then if you had to bring back like one side character i'm talking like the laura lee carmen um like any of the exes carter like anybody Ooh. kind of random that's been around laura lee you know I, she I did know not she have is. a long enough moment on this show yeah i remember i ran into her at like sidebar in san diego years later i would love to have her back she brought so much to the show yeah. in such a short period of time yeah she there's some iconic clips of her going around and people are like where is she now and i'm like wherever she is let's leave her alone <laughs> but if she did want to come back i think everyone would be here for it yeah i feel like she was a good one yeah she really was do you have a peach and pit of just the last 10 years of vanderpump a scene that you're like oh that was fun and iconic that was like you know, happy or, you know, the best. And then something that you were like, God, if I could delete one scene from the show, it would be this. I would have to say my wedding, the second wedding <laughs> last year, season 10 wedding was definitely the peach. I mean, the rainbow coming out yeah. of the sky, Magical. summer as my flower girl, and then just marrying Brock and our vows and all of that was probably one of the best moments yeah. I've ever had on this show. Oh, there's a lot of pits. I would just say uh, <laughs> most of season six. <laughs> okay, fair, fair. Just if I never talked about the TV on the wall. Oh, yeah. You know. It gets brought I up a still, lot. I still, I have to do cameos where they're like, can you say that seven minutes? I'm like, oh, right. God, it's still a thing. Um, and then Jared Lips, I was asking him, I was like, I get to interview Sheena today. What questions? And he was like, she's had so many iconic scenes on the show. Is there anything of a couple of these that, um, that you could share kind of like maybe something somebody doesn't know about these scenes or things that happened off camera um, specifically okay the first pilot of VPR mm -hmm. the crossover when yeah. you went from Beverly Hills Housewives and then you walk in the back of the kitchen like was there anything there that we didn't see or anything that was maybe I don't know left on the editing floor or I feel like you really saw all of that you saw that moment where the camera physically followed me get up and mm -hmm. walk into the kitchen it was the most seamless transition ever yeah. people are like 20 minutes into Vanderpump Rules and they're like wait what Am happened to the housewives watching? yeah where, where do they go where are they at, you know yeah so uh, from what I remember that was pretty raw and real and yeah. you saw a lot of that it's so crazy to think that that was like 2011 and 12 yeah. we shot all of that stuff did you have any idea then like did you I mean obviously you'd been in a lot of stuff you'd shot pilots and you know been you know in the background or like had smaller roles on stuff 
So you'd been around cameras. Did you know then that it would ever be, did you think like, oh, this is going to be like, yeah, we might get like three seasons of our own show and then it's going to die. Did you feel like this was like a big moment in that time where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to start this show and you know, this could be the rest of my life. Like, how did you feel at the time? Like, what did you think was going to come from that? I felt like we would be so lucky if we were able to have as long of a run as The Hills did. Wow. Like they did what- six seasons. And I was like, how lucky would we be? And where I was at in my relationship was like, we got engaged season two. And then we're like, oh my God, if we get a season three, we get married. And then just even talking about what if we had a season five? Wow. Would we have a baby by then? And just thinking into the future. But I could have never imagined 11 years and hopefully more later, you know, would still be doing this. I was just so grateful each season because and still to this day and I think it's a realistic way of living every season I live as if it's our last yeah you know we give it our all because we don't know yeah when this could all go away right so I've been living that way since season one (laughs) right and we're still doing it but yeah I was really hopeful that we would get to live out our initial contract and hopefully have six or seven seasons that would be great that's so funny and so you guys have well surpassed that yeah i okay when you are filming can you tell ever when you are making a line that you're like that's going to be iconic and then it is like for example did you have any idea that when you held your arm up and said it's all happening that like that was going to become like your number one gif i could have only hoped you know (laughs) (laughs) i feel like sometimes i say stuff and i think that was really good but then it's not maybe or it doesn't hit the same so I don't know I feel like that's where I also lack confidence because sometimes when I think I do something good and then it's not as well received I'm like oh shit I should just not try could you tell when Stassi said the Pinot Grigio comment to you did you know that was gonna stick you didn't think twice about that no I looked her up and down and I was like bitch get your own wine I love the up and down I (laughs) such an iconic would have never thought that that line would have been so iconic because in the moment it was just like a fuck you. yeah people and I walked are away still mentioning it 10 plus years later I know so crazy it's very interesting yeah mm, I love it okay let me see if I have any last uh last minute questions okay um all right you already asked which I was gonna say which season was the hardest but six for you oh okay a fun last question okay Mary fuck kill oh and hopefully you do better than Brock did last oh night oh my god he was awful Tom Tom or James Oh, <laughs> um, ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah, I feel like if you ask this question to at any other, like every season, it would be completely different, right? Because look, we saw how Schwartz's marriage mm-hmm. ended up. James Cooks, I can't <laughs> see myself having sex with either of them. We're gonna have to kill Sandoval. Okay. I figured, but that I would have. I would have answered it very differently before. I probably would have married him. That's what I think too. I feel like if we combed through old podcasts, there would have been a Mary mm-hmm. Fuck Hill where he was involved, and he would have been the instant Mary. Yeah, I'm gonna marry Schwartz. I just close my eyes with James. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it. Well, thanks for this was coming so on, co-hosting. Thanks for letting me interview you. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was so fun. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks. Bye. I've been searching for this all my life.